Hello everyone and welcome to our first ever episode of Space This Week. I for one am very excited to be introducing this brand new series to you all. I've wanted to do a weekly news series for quite some time now and now seems like a good a time as any to start one as it's currently Mars season. A magical time in which the launch window for conducting a mission from Earth to Mars opens up. An event that only occurs once every two years when Earth and Mars align their orbits just right. And in my excitement for Mars season, I came to the realisation that I needed to rediscover my calling for a space news series. Going forward, I'm hoping to release space this week every Monday, and you know, I hope it'll be a nice way to cheer up your start to the week. The core of this series is to provide you all with the juicy details and gossip about the launches that are planned for the coming week, which I hope will get you super hyped for all the epic launches you'll be bearing witness to. However, I don't want this series to just be restricted to some, like, cold summary of launch news, so to spice things up, I'll throw in some weekly historical insight, share some cool astronomy news, and just stuff that I stumbled upon that I feel is interesting. For this, the first episode, I'll briefly explain each segment as we get to them. This is a journey for me as much as it is for you, so any and all feedback is greatly appreciated. And so, without further ado, let's get on with the news. To kick things off, we'll do a quick recap of all the things we missed last week. Uh, the top news from last week was, of course, the UAE's launch of the Hope Mars mission on July the 19th. This is the UAE's first ever Mars mission, and it'll be a holistic study of the global Martian atmosphere and its climate. Over in America, we also saw the launch of the Falcon 9 and NASIS 2 on the 20th of July from Cape Canaveral, which launched a communications satellite for the South Korean military. And this was, of course, the second mission for the booster after previously successfully sending Bob Benkin and Doug Harley to the ISS. We also saw the launch of China's first independent Mars mission. Their six-wheeled Tianwen-1 robot is well on its way to the Red Planet as we speak, and it'll have a goal to search for signs of water beneath the Martian surface. China also saw the launch of their Ziyuan-3 and Tianqi-10 satellites atop a Long March 4B rocket. The former will survey the climate to help reduce the effect of natural disasters and assist with things like farming and conservation, while the latter is a communications satellite with an onboard camera, which will be for education. Russia's been a launching too. The Progress supply ship successfully launched and docked with the ISS. There was a bit of a wobble at the last minute with some misalignment issues, but it all managed to work out in the end. Yes, it was a very exciting week last week with lots of cool launches happening, but now it's time to move along to look at what's happening in the days ahead. And I'm going to talk in particular about the NASA Mars 2020 mission, so stick around if you want to hear some cool details about that one. So let's move on to all the launches that we have to look forward to over the next seven days. We've got four rockets launching into the skies this week, the first of which is the Ariane 5 Galaxy 30, launching on the 28th of July. It will launch from French Guinea with a mission to place a Galaxy 30 communication satellite into orbit, as well as a mission extension vehicle too, which will rendezvous with the aging Intelsat 1002 satellite to prolong its useful lifetime. Also coming along for the ride is the BSAT-4B satellite, which will supplement the services currently provided by the BSAT-4A. Both satellites have a design life of 15 years, and we at Space This Week wish them both the best of luck. The next day we'll hopefully see Russia launch their Proton Express 80 and Proton Express 103 mission on July the 29th from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Initially planned for March 30th, this launch has received a few delays, so hopefully it'll go off without a hitch this time. It will launch the Express 80 and Express 103 communication satellites, which will deal with most aspects of digital communication across Russia, including mobile connections, television and radio, high-speed internet and data transmission. They will certainly prove to be invaluable to Russia's residents, so let's hope it launches this time. The same day, we also have a Falcon 9 launching the Starlink 9 mission. I did wonder if this was going to go ahead, actually, as we were getting pretty close to SpaceX's alleged end of July launch, but rumours are now surfacing that they plan to launch the rocket on July the 29th. The Starlink mission is one that needs absolutely no introduction, with its lofty goal of providing high-speed internet access on a near global scale for 2021. I'm sure we are all eagerly awaiting this launch. 
And finally, we have the most exciting news of this week's episode. It is, of course, the launch of NASA's Mars 2020 Perseverance rover, which will be hopefully taking place on July the 30th. Uh, the name Perseverance was chosen from a Name the Rover contest, which received a cool 28,000 submissions. The winner was Alex Mather, a high school student from Virginia, who wrote that we are a species of explorers and we will meet many setbacks on the way to Mars. However, we can persevere. We, not as a nation, but as humans, will not give up. NASA remain the only organization to have successfully landed on Mars, so I have very high hopes for this mission. Their first rover mission was, of course, in 1997. The Sojourner was small, and its only purpose was to prove that we could, in fact, have a rover on the Red Planet. We then had Spirit and Opportunity in 2004, who discovered evidence that the planet once hosted running water before becoming a frozen nightmare wasteland. <laughs> Most recently, we launched the Curiosity in 2012, which landed in Gale Crater and discovered that many millennia ago, the crater held a lake and an environment which could have supported microbial life. This mission is, of course, still ongoing, and Curiosity continues studying the Martian surface. The 2020 rover will launch on an Atlas V rocket, the same rocket that launched Curiosity, the Maven rover, and the InSight Mars lander, so we know it has a good pedigree for launching successful Mars missions. The launch window will open on the 30th of July, and the mission will launch from Cape Canaveral. Once in orbit, it'll have a cool 200-day voyage ahead of it to reach Mars, where it will then land at the Jezero Crater. This crater is 28 miles wide and is just north of the planet's equator. Scientists believe that this area was once an oasis, with evidence of flooding, rivers, lakes, and depositing sediments packed with carbonite minerals and clay. The science team believes that the river will have collected and preserved signs of microbial life. The mission itself has clocked in at a cost of around 2.1 billion US dollars, slightly cheaper than the 2.5 billion price tag of Curiosity, some of these savings come from NASA's reuse of some of the spare parts from the Curiosity mission, and by using the same experienced design team who helped build Curiosity, helped design the Perseverance rover. And Perseverance's objective is to determine if life ever existed on Mars, and it'll study the surface of Mars and search for preserved signs of biosignatures in rock samples. It'll also collect data about Mars's geology and climate to provide scientists a richer sense of past life on the planet. Perseverance will pave the way for future Mars missions, and it will do this in many ways, but the key technologies are the Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, say that five times fast, or MOXIE, <laughs> and the Mars Environment Dynamics Analyzer, or MEDA. Uh, MOXIE is an experiment which will produce oxygen from Mars's carbon dioxide atmosphere. It's more of a proof of concept experiment, but it will push us further forward in our manned mission challenge if it succeeds. MEDA is an instrument suite which will provide information about the current weather, climate, and dust on the surface. This is the first rover to specifically search for signs of microbial life on Mars, building upon the work of its predecessors that were focused on confirming that Mars did indeed once have a habitable climate. Another new feature of the Perseverance is the ability to core into rocks and extract samples, which will then be photographed to determine whether it should be returned to Earth for home study. This is another first for a Mars mission, with a daring fetch rover planned to launch in 2026 to recover these samples. The fetch rover will collect the samples and carry them to a return rocket, which will then fly the samples into orbit and dock with a return orbiter that will then carry the samples back to Earth. This sample return mission is a joint venture between NASA and the ESA, and it'll allow us to study the samples uh, for many years to come on our terrestrial laboratories, which are a little bit more advanced than the ones that we can land on Mars. Another cool little add-on to this mission is the Ingenuity helicopter. This is another first for space exploration, the first powered flight on another planet. It's important to add the powered clarification, as of course, Russia famously flew the two balloon aerobots on Venus back in the 1980s, but this Mars helicopter flight, well, it'll be challenging to say the least, given the tenuousness of Mars's atmosphere. So its first flight will just be a 20 to 30 second test, and if it's successful, it'll then attempt to fly further to take aerial photographs of the surface. These photographs won't directly support the Mars 2020 mission, but it's designed to further our technological abilities on Mars and hopefully prove that autonomous powered flight is possible. Overall, this mission is certainly a daring one. 
If achieved, it will exponentially expand not only our knowledge of Mars, but also our hope for any future manned Mars mission. I especially love all the little links to our much-loved Curiosity rover who I hope will still be working away when his younger brother finally lands on the surface of Mars on February the 18th, 2021. Our dearly departed opportunity lasted 15 years, so there is certainly hope for Curiosity to carry on a little bit longer. The Mars 2020 mission will be one for the history books and I definitely will be on the edge of my seat if it does indeed launch on Thursday as planned. Of course, if you have a time machine handy, there are a few other things that you can look at this week that happened. On July the 28th, 1960, the famous Apollo program was announced at a press conference, and on the same day, four years later, the first successful Ranger mission, Ranger 7, was launched, a probe that managed to capture and return over 4,000 photos of the moon before lunar impact. On July the 30th, in 1610, the father of observational astronomy, Galileo, observed Saturn's rings. He couldn't see them well enough to discern their true nature, unfortunately. If only he'd managed to live another 400 years or so, he would have been able to see them up close through the eyes of the late Cassini satellite. Also on July the 30th, but in uh, 1971 this time, we saw the fourth successful moon landing, Apollo 15, take place. And, uh, well, that's it, actually, for space history. I'm keeping this part of the episode short and sweet. I think it's a cool little thing to add a nice connection to our past, but I didn't want it to be too long, as uh, there's a lot of other ground that needed to be covered in this episode. And that's it. That's the news this week. <laughs> Next week, we'll hopefully be able to discuss a Soyuz launch and launch conditions permitting, some launches for India's space research organization, and many Falcon 9 launches, one of which will hopefully be Starlink 10. It's always hard to predict, as rocket launches are very weather dependent, so you'll just have to tune in next week to see what ends up going ahead. This series is obviously very new and very much in its infancy, so I'd really appreciate any feedback or comments that you might want to share down below. And if you liked this video, then, well, you know what to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and are now just as excited as me for this week's upcoming launches. And I'll sign off by wishing you all a fantastic Monday and uh, goodbye.